Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Heather on the marketing team at Eagle Eye Networks, and today's webinar will introduce an overview of the Eagle Eye Cloud VMS product wizard. Before we get started, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the Zoom Q&A box at any time, and we'll address them at the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. This webinar is also being recorded and will be emailed to all registrants after the presentation. Now with that, I'll go ahead and introduce your speaker for today. And that is Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan is our Director of Product who specializes in driving vision and roadmap for Eagle Eye Networks. He focuses on collaboration between customer and company with cross-functional partners to deliver constant improvements and features. Now with that, I can hand it over to Tim for the rest of your presentation. Thanks, Heather. Um, first, just a little bit about Eagle Eye Networks. Eagle Eye was founded in 2012 by Dean Draco, and we are number one in cloud video surveillance worldwide. We're headquartered in Austin, Texas, and we have offices in three continents, and we do our own proprietary data centers all over the world. And we have customers spanning across 48 countries. Today, I'm going to talk about the Eagle Eye Networks product wizard. So this product wizard has something is something I've actually been working on for about six years on and off. And if any of you have ever taken the original training that we did, you'll remember the we call we didn't call it a wizard at that time, but at that time it was an estimator to be able to estimate and calculate how much bandwidth you would need for your cameras. So if you go to en.com slash EEVMS wizard, you can get to this page. It's a live web page. It's based on an Excel spreadsheet actually that will allow you to enter the number of cameras, the quantity resolution, all the data that you want. Better matter of fact, the more data you enter, the more accurate it will be. And we will tell you which bridge CMVR and switch that you need. So a little bit more about the wizard itself. In this section, this is where we want the input data from you. And so we wanna know the quantity of cameras, the types of cameras, resolution in megapixels, and we'll do some examples and we'll walk through that. The number of cameras with analytics active. So are you gonna turn on any analytics on a per camera basis and how many? The preview resolution of the camera, how many days of retention do you want? And this days of retention I wanna add is for the bridge uh, when, and the top one is the bridge. We're going to tell you on a bridge, um, you know, what you're going to need to get all of that to the cloud, or if you're using a CMVR, what you're going to need to keep it on the CMVR. Uh, image quality, and then of course the scene type, and we'll go a little bit more in depth on all of those. So there's a, some additional features in the top right corner, uh, local display HDMI, and so this is in the web known as local display via monitor when you go into the settings of the bridge to enable that. Um, and then local display via browser is the local display HTTP. So as far as resources go, this one takes considerably more resources than just viewing uh, via the web browser. So make sure and enter what you think that's gonna be and you can enter a grid of two by two, three by three, four by four or five by five, depending on how you're gonna use that. Um, you can also, check if you need industrial temperature. So if you set it to yes, we're gonna present uh, the bridges that match that criteria. And if you need rack mounted or not, so you can say yes or no for that one. So with that, I'm gonna jump right into a live demo of the site. So I'm on the website now, and this is what you'll see when you log in. Uh, you may occasionally see this updated. This is the latest version from 519. Um, and so we have four groups across, and let me talk about those really quickly. You can have separate groups of cameras and enter separate data for each one. Um, so in this case, we have one camera selected. Let's say I wanna take that to 10, and I'll just take it to 10 and hit enter, and now, it's uh, automatically done the estimate for that and given me some suggestions at the bottom. But under camera type, we have uh, the normal H.264 camera. We have the option for single stream. And so what's this? We have certain 
cameras that can only accept a single stream or can only provide a single stream to our system. Now they take considerably more resources. Um, if you search for single stream under special features on our website, you can see which cameras those are, or you can add a camera via RTSP and do it single stream if you have no other choice. But just keep in mind, it's the equivalent of adding about three normal cameras, three or four um, in some cases, uh, if you're doing HD over coax or if you're doing analog. So in this case, if I just select analog, um, automatically it's gonna go down and, and give me suggestions of an analog bridge. I'll take this back to H264. Then we have the resolution in megapixels. So, uh, the one thing of note, if you do choose analog, and I've got an analog example here, uh, it's about 0.3. Um, so how do you get megapixels? It's basically height times width. So if you took 640 by 480, which is the standard definition analog that we support, you're going to get uh, around 0.3. So this one, you can enter anything you want. If you had, for some reason, a 1.5 megapixel, you can enter it as a decimal point here, and we'll, we'll take that. So just put your number of megapixels, in this case, I'll leave it at one. And then the number of cameras with analytics active uh, is set to two. And if you change this, I'll change this to zero and show you that it changes this approximate utilization. And you'll see that as you go. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to two. Then our preview resolution. Uh, and this is approximate, not all cameras are gonna do this, but most will do somewhere in this range. You might see a 320 by 180, for example, if it's a 16 by nine ratio. Uh, but we have the SIF, uh, dual SIF, 640 by 360, and then the uh, HD1 that you can choose. And when you change that, it also changes the utilization. The days of retention, you can enter uh, any number of days that you would like. And then you can set your image quality, low, medium, and high. And this is referring to the full resolution video and what you're going to set that to. And you're going to see the biggest difference there in the cloud bandwidth needed daily. And I'll go over that in just a second. So I'll leave this at seven. I'll leave it at medium and then the scene type. So we've given you four choices. We have the indoor medium, um, indoor not busy, indoor busy and outdoor. If you really don't know what it's going to be, set it to outdoor. That's going to be uh, the highest use type. And to make sure that you can get everything to the cloud, uh, set that accordingly. So if we leave it at medium, we can also go over to the local display via HDMI and set it. And as we change this, you'll see the utilization changes considerably uh, on that one. That's uh, That uses quite a bit of resource um, local display. And, and let me go ahead and, and turn that back on and show you one other thing. Whenever you're over 85%, we're going to show the utilization in red for the recommended bridge. And I'm, I would like to point out anything over... 85%, I would go to the next bridge model. Now, could it be done? Yes, but it doesn't leave really any room for any growth. So if you wanted to turn some of the cameras to a higher megapixel, for example, or add analytics, you want to you want to be about 80% or lower for the utilization. So in this case, we're going to show you what that is, 87% here, and we're telling you consider that next model or go to multiple bridges. So if you just split this over two, three, oh, fours, for example, in this case, you'd be great. If I change this to do rack mount, it's gonna say 301, the rack mounted 301 and the recommendation. So uh, go a little further down. Now, what we're seeing here is the results. The first one is for 100% cloud retention. And right now I've only got a number entered in group one. So these are all zero, they're not affecting what we recommend. So for the 10 cameras at one megapixel, uh, we're recommending uh, that uh, the 301, because I set it to rack mount needed, and notice this number. This number is actually the part number. So if you're gonna make an order, uh, the part number is shown right here, uh, and it's after uh, this symbol for each one. We also show you what you would need for uh, a bridge that has built-in PoE. In this case, you'd need uh, two 403s because of the number of cameras for PoE. It's just an option. Uh, we tell you this cloud bandwidth needed daily average. So for this to get everything to the cloud like it should with our current settings, we need about 8.6 megabits uh, to get it to the cloud. Now for live viewing, uh, we've got some assumptions that we've made and that is we're doing one frame per second for preview, 
which is the default, and two simultaneous live viewed cameras, like two separate cameras. And that's what this suggested bandwidth for live viewing is. Uh, and then we give you the recommended eagle eye switch. So in this case, with 10 IP cameras, um, a 16 port switch is all that would be needed. Now at the same time, we're giving you an Eagle Eye CMVR with 100% local retention. And that is also based on the seven day quantity. And you can see here, it looks like we're gonna have about 406 gigabytes, and this is in gigabytes, um, of storage needed for the seven days with this indoor medium. If I change this, for example, to indoor busy, it's gonna increase. It also increased how much bandwidth we need to get all that to the cloud. Uh, if I change this to indoor not busy, you can see it drops quite a bit. And so I would encourage you, the more information you fill out as accurately as possible to how your settings are gonna be, what you think they're gonna be, the better this is, is gonna give you the recommendation. So in this case, uh, we're saying a 320, uh, but once again, I would go one model bigger with this setting. Um, and if we just change it a little bit, maybe drop it down to seven cameras, you can see that now we're back in a nice range in the utilization of about 70%. Um, so uh, on the CMVR, we have a separate setting and this is cl uh, cloud previews and metadata. So this is the bandwidth that we need just to get the metadata to the cloud. And this is considering that you're running the CMVR with the M10 plan, uh, which is the remote view only. Uh, the suggested bandwidth for live viewing is 2.3. The metadata needed is 2.2, just to get all that metadata to the cloud. So if you're gonna run the bridge in uh, the mode, uh, if you're gonna run the CMBR, let me say, with cloud retention, then the cloud retention, you're gonna need this bandwidth to get it all to the cloud. That's listed for bridge. So do we have um, any, uh, additional questions about that. Uh, one of the nice things I also want to point out is I can have, let's say, I'm going to add about four cameras here that are two megapixel. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this back down to two. And then I could add maybe one camera that's four megapixel. And then this is going to show me about where I'm at. So it looks like I really need to go to a 401, which is that higher model based on this utilization. Uh, what I'm doing might be able to drop this help just a little bit, but yeah, so we really need the one model up when we see this anything in red here, we're going to want to go to that next higher model. Um, and then for example, if I were to decide to add uh, some analog cameras at the same time here, then we're going to tell you, Hey, we need a 310. In this case, you can see we're at hundred percent utilization. So we would need to use one model higher for that. And that's a quick look um, here. Let me go back uh, to one previous slide here and show in the beginning because I had a question. Uh, one second. The question that came in is where do you download it? Um, it's not actually downloadable, but if you go to een.com slash eevms wizard, it's live on our website. And so that's what I'm using it as is just a live, live on the website um, to enter the data. I'm gonna bring it back up because I'm gonna scroll down all the way to the bottom and at the very bottom of this page is a reset button. If I click reset, then it's just gonna zero everything back out to a single camera and these settings so that you can start over to do a new estimate. So the idea being um, that you can get a really good idea of the utilization on a bridge um, as well. Now, I wanna point one other thing out. If you go a little higher, let's say I'm gonna put uh, 30 cameras in. Um, actually, let me drop it down to about 20. And then um, on the top end of using a 304, but you'll find that we're using, uh, you may get some recommendations from the wizard that don't exactly match up to our, our old specifications for these units. Uh, and that's because we, as we have continued uh, making the bridges, we, we make them more efficient. Our software is so much better. We can actually handle higher megapixel cameras 
um, than in the past for these. So we've got a new series of data sheets that we're working on that we expect to have out this quarter that will, that will reflect this. But in the meantime, um, if you can stay in that 80% range and not go over 80%, you'll find that uh, this wizard will tell you you can actually put more cameras or perhaps higher megapixel cameras as well. So if I go to like, t uh, I could get 22 megapixel cameras here on the 401 at about 50% utilization and I'm in pretty good shape there, uh, just for example. So if I drop that to 30, um, you're going to see that I'm still here. If I go higher, maybe around the 50 range, uh, we jump to the 501. Maybe I want to go about 60. And with 60, oops, type that again, sorry. With 60, we actually, in this case, will break it down to a 501 and a 401. So instead of saying buy two 501s for this, you could really split this across a 501 and a 401. So that's, I just wanted to throw that example out there and you get both those part numbers as well the 501 and 401. I've got uh, one more question here. The question is regarding uh, the daily upload. Um, and so in this case, we would need uh, 70 megabits to get all of that to the cloud, uh, daily average. So if you don't have uh, the 70 average and you want to upload some at night, then you would have to have enough to make up the difference overnight. So this, I don't have the answer for that in this wizard, but uh, if you contacted one of our sales engineers or call in through support, we would be happy to help you determine that number. And we can help you determine it. Say if you only had you know, 10 hours a day of business hours and then overnight you wanted to go to a higher rate and limited in the daytime, you still need that overall average up to be this number. And if you don't have it, you're probably not going to get everything to the cloud. That means you should use a CMVR. Let's see any other questions? Uh, I've got one, uh, one question regarding H265. And at this time we have no plans uh, to support H265. Um, and that was a question about the H.265 support. We're still st staying with H.264. We haven't seen a, enough bandwidth and savings in all of our testing yet uh, to make the leap to H.265. Um, also, everything about this wizard, I've tried to, to enter a lot of data, is located in the Dropbox. So uh, as a reseller, you should be able to have uh, in the dealer Dropbox uh, a folder with the Eagle Eye Products Wizard. I'm just going to show you that really quick. And so uh, there's a PDF in there under product and under guides, and you'll see the Eagle Eye Networks VMS Product Wizard. And this basically tells quite a bit about it, um, gives you the breakdown of what everything is. It also will show you uh, what each setting is, what it's for, just for example, what the scene types do, the additional features, um, and then your results. Uh, for the recommended switch, the utilization, so forth, um, and then for the CMVR. I just wanted to point that out. Let's see, any other questions? I've got a question from Tim that, uh, that asks about different camera models. And so uh, basically, if you have multiple different models and different settings, that's what the various groups are for. So, for example, if I wanted to have five cameras here at two megapixel <clears throat> at 320, I could have, say, four cameras here and set those to maybe four megapixel um, with no analytics and a different preview resolution, perhaps. And I could even set a different retention for those. Maybe I have one camera here at one megapixel and I want to get a 60 day retention out of that one um, and then make sure that this quality is medium. This is how you would do, you could do up to four different uh, settings in the wizard here for the various types of camera. And in this case, uh, 401 is recommended with a 420.
All right. Well, I appreciate everyone's time today. Um, jump back over to our slides to uh, to close us out. Um, I do want to mention one other thing before closing, and that is uh, Brevo. Um, Brevo is our sister company, uh, fantastic company. Just wanted to mention them, world leader in cloud access and control, and also another company, um, Swift Sensors, that also has a, a fantastic integration with us with automated monitoring of equipment. Uh, you can get notifications, historically see uh, temperatures, uh, humidity, so forth with Swift Sensors. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Heather. And thank you very much for your time today. And I hope that this uh, Eagle Eye Products VMS Wizard will be a great help to you uh, in the future. And any feedback is absolutely welcome. Thank you. All right, Tim, thank you for the overview. I think you did cover most of the questions during the presentation, but we have a couple more that came through. Um, at this time, if anybody else has any questions, please type them in the Q&A box in Zoom. Now would be a great time to ask them. So uh, a question that is coming up here is, if you could just display the link to the wizard, please. And that is EEN.com slash EEVMS wizard. So that is where you can find that. Uh, another question we had was asking about specific camera support. What steps would someone take to push updates for something such as this? To push updates for the wizard or for camera support? For a camera support. Oh, for camera support. Um, to request new camera support or updated updated camera support is that an, I didn't see that question. I apologize. Yes. Um, to request new camera support, um, if you have the camera on the same network with the bridge, you can click the mail icon uh, next to under available cameras to request support. And that if you fill out all that information and leave the camera on and leave the bridge on. Uh, we will create support for that camera. Now, our camera support comes in uh, the form of bridge firmware, which is automatic, and our bridge firmware is updated typically about every month. So about once a month, there's a new update that's pushed out automatically. You don't have to do anything, and then uh, the bridges will be able to support the latest cameras that are shown on our camera compatibility list. Okay, thank you. Another one just came in here. Our bandwidth calculations for fisheye cameras the same as regular cam dome cameras? Yes, fisheye cameras uh, are, are identical. They're the same. Uh, if you're using our new uh, fisheye dewarping, our cloud client dewarping, then we're only recording and streaming the full fisheye image. So whatever resolution that is, enter that into the megapixels and the bit rate that you have it set to uh, make sure and set if you're low, medium, or high quality to account for that, and we'll give you the answer for that one. It's just, it's treated as a single uh, camera, so we're only actually uh, recording the one main fisheye view, but we can display that uh, multiple times on the screen in the client. So it's still only the one stream being recorded and played back. All right, perfect. It looks like we got through all of the questions for now. If you have any remaining ones, please reach out to us via phone or email. We're always here and available for you. Also, look out for your email after this webinar. It'll include the recording as well as the link to our product wizard. And thank you so much, Tim, for being our presenter today. Thank you. My pleasure. And thank you so much for supporting Eagle Eye Networks. Thank you. We look forward to hearing from you.